Hello everyone! I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Today we're having another look at the next deck of the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth for the Commander series and it's the deck deck upgrade Commander series. Basically this is where we try and give you a best idea of how we will go about upgrading a pre-con commander deck and this one is going to be the Horse of Mordor commander deck with the Sauron Lord of the Rings as its commander. What we do is we go about and we give you a slew or a list of cards that we think for each type, so creatures, artifacts, so on and so forth, that we think that would fit really well into the deck, into the theme of the deck and would make this deck really really strong. Now like other guides out there, we do not give you a set list and we do not tell you here, here is the deck that we would play. Mainly because a lot of people have different cards and different means to resource the cards so we try and give you a fairly good idea of the best way to play the commander and the deck and the way that we would go about doing that and then it's up to you to choose which card you would get to fill in the gaps and uh, yeah I hope this, this is gonna be a very useful video for you if you have the Horse of Mordor deck and on top of that we tend to try and give you an idea in the previous video where we reviewed and we looked at the list of the uh, of the deck proper of the pre-con deck the kind of cards that we would cut or keep and our opinion on the deck as a pre-con overall so I'll leave a link in the description for that uh, uh, in case you're interested in checking that out. To recap from the previous decks, this deck itself is actually the one that has the least amount of synergy that I would say or at least is one of the more annoying ones to play out of the pre-cons mainly because as a, as a commander in of itself Sauron is fairly expensive most of the cards are really expensive you don't have a lot of ramp to them and although there are some ways to, to reanimate aka also reanimate itself uh, the deck just doesn't seem synergistic enough it feels very split so the way that, that I wanted to approach this kind of deck really was okay let's try and focus a lot on the two parts of what the commander does best and forego everything else. So without further ado let's have a look at the commander proper and so Sauron Lord of the Rings costs 8, 5 generic and then Grixis to play and it's a 9-9 whenever you cast this spell so it has to be cast and you can just leave it into your uh, graveyard and reanimate it. You must 5 and mill five cards then return a creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield so that's the reanimate part of the deck plus it gives you a an amass to token uh, or buffs up a, a current amass token and then it has trample which is fairly decent and whenever a commander an opponent controls dies you get to have the ring 10 which is really really good now if you look at these two parts and the commander as a whole he's too expensive to cast like he is so expensive to cast and unfortunately as I said before funny enough um, I would have actually have gone with Saruman as the commander out of the the two because you get a Saruman um, I think it's the, of the many colors or the white I don't remember which one it is but you get a Saruman in there and um, that one is a four coster and has a lot more synergy if I'm not mistaken with instruments and sorceries and a mass orcs depending on how many ca uh, you cast but the main idea with Sauron is uh, and also the, the idea of, the, of this whole thing of these guys is that we want to keep the commander that Watsi that you know that comes with the precon as the the core of the deck proper. Therefore, let's stick with Sauron and let's have a look. So first off, he's really expensive, so we need ways to cast him as soon as possible. Secondly, he has a reanimator. So what this means is you want the deck to reanimate a lot, but because he costs so much, you're going to have to have a lot of spells that allow you to reanimate while you're trying to get him on the board. So these are the two things, because remember, you can reanimate him and get the trigger to reanimate. Yeah, you actually have to cast him, which is unfortunate. And then the other really Good part that I like is the ring time seeing you whenever you destroy a commander on opponent control. Now, the way that I build this deck, 
Um, I would hope you prepare your, <laughs> I guess, the table that you play against for, for a good intake of sodium for that day because it's going to be really salty. The way that I've thought about building this deck is, yes, you reanimate, you ramp to Sauron as much as you can with these colors because usually ramp does not sit in these color combination of Grixis and you control the board as much as you can which is the most annoying part of any game so out of all the decks this one is gonna be the one that's more akin to a cdh so a competitive uh commander deck than the other ones and this is more a necessity than anything else just uh, to we're not trying to actually make anybody have any ba bad experiences it's just the fact that the way that the commander is forces you to be a control deck and a a very annoying deck so that you can can do your things on your own turn so that's that's the gist of it so let's look at creatures first and I will divide the creatures in two parts because you have reanimate targets which are going to be huge creatures that are really expensive that usually you don't want to be casting off your hand not necessarily and then you get the other creatures that are more like enablers and creatures that help you do a bit more stuff yeah so keeping that in mind the the tools of this game are going to be mostly of this deck is going to be mostly residing in instants and sorceries so this is going to be your bread and butter instants and sorceries the the creatures that enable the other creatures they're good but i would keep more a focus on the instants and sorceries slot and if you're looking at investing and buying new cards for this kind of deck maybe think about okay maybe i'll spend a little bit more on that side rather than on the dumb creature side because in the end there are a lot of very expensive dumb creatures that you can reanimate uh, that are extremely good as reanimate targets that not necessarily are going to make the list because you can't just put you know the slew of all all <laughs> the creatures but it's still a very good idea i believe to to have these kind of cards in 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 your deck so let's keep that in mind. So let's start off first off. And again, when we go through these cards, we don't go in any specific order. It's just the order that's in a folder. And therefore, there's no qualitative thing. And I will call out when it gets to the point that I believe card is more necessary for what we're trying to achieve than other card. Again, we're trying to give you as many tools as you can. Then you decide what to cut out and what to keep. On top of that, if there are cards that I list here that are already in the pre-con, the reason why I list them is because they're so key and fundamental to our strategy. Now, I won't go and list those cards. As I said, go watch the previous review and unboxing because there I've already explained the kind of theme that I wanted to go down and which cards I would keep and which ones I will remove but if if it does happen like in previous videos where we quote a couple of cards that are in the deck it's because we believe strongly that the synergy of these cards is worth us stating do keep them in the deck like for example we don't talk about the reanimate in here like the reanimate spell because well we said to keep the reanimate in in the other video and it's a duh kind of moment it's a very good spell so let's start up with the first creature and this one will be the dockside extortionist now the reason why as i said before we need to be able to cast sauron off our hand and also there are some creatures that maybe we want to ramp into before sauron and tokens uh sorry a treasure token generation is going to be key to this deck and red does a fairly good deal of token generation and extra effects on board that really synergize with this now you won't see too much in play here in the creature slot but you will see more in the instance and sorcery slot so dockside distortion is this is a classic and it's a great creature it enters the battlefield you create treasure token right and of course you're looking for to play against opponents that have a lot of enchantments and a lot of artifacts but you know realistically the name of the game in, in commander at least is some artifacts for ramping so even if they had just have one each three four tokens that's amazing if somebody plays two or three and another person plays one and another place of a person plays two you're going to be ramping next turn or even that same turn into something huge right so be it sour on be it whatever we want so definitely this is a great creature to keep next up we have an enabler for the reanimate part of the deck and for those who are new to the reanimate you're trying to put as many as possible creature spells into your graveyard so that you can reanimate them from graveyard of course there will be unfortunate 
times where you go and you reanimate and uh well you mill some cards that you might have needed like lands or some spells but you know that's that's the gamble that you're taking uh, but play crafter and the nice card allows each and every one to sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker and then any player that doesn't do that discards a card so that comes to yourself as well you sacrifice a creature maybe you want to sacrifice this one or alternatively you can sacrifice another one that has a great atb and you're going to reanimate that creature so playcraft is very simple not a necessity for this deck but it still is a pretty good reanimate card next up we have the obsessive stitcher now this one is a, yet again another way to put cards into our graveyard it's a zero three you tap it to draw a card discard a card so this is very nice. You're looting away your cards. And then you can tap and pay four to return that creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And this is amazing. This is just, you know, you're reanimating any creature. And, and this is a great, great, great little cre creature card. That's it. Next up, you get the Phyraxian Dragon Engine. I think this is the only one that I have out of the Brothers War with an Earth that I would keep because it has an ETB that uh, allows you orb you know, enters the battlefield effect that allows you to discard your hand if you played him from the graveyard. And of course, you'll want to have bigger and better creatures to actually reanimate with your spells that reanimate. But you can play this from the graveyard so you can sack it or discard it. And then you re ATB it, you get to discard your hand, you can draw three cards this is a great card and it's very annoying it's a 2-2 with double strike so it's always good as a first defender line and if it dies you know this so be it next up we have the flare of of the hate bound which is basically a creature that hasn't dying which means that it dies once bring it back with a plus one plus one counter on it if you can put a put minus one minus one counter on it it cancels out by the way in case you didn't know but we're not going to be doing that here but anyway you it bring it if you bring it back and it says that whenever a creature enters the battlefield from your graveyard including himself you deal um, damage equals to the power of that creature to any target and well what do you know we have huge creatures that really want to enter the battlefield from the graveyard so yeah you're gonna be doing a lot of damage with this card and it's very very good this can be a reanimate target but also a ramp into target because i say that um you might want to cast this off your treasures generation just because then you can use the reanimate for your better cards and then once it enters the battlefield even if they kill it once you won't attack with it necessarily but even if you kill it once uh it can come back anyway so it's it's a good idea next up you get the dire fleet daredevil and this is very good to get back or well to replay your instant and sorcery spells this allows you to take an instant sorcery spell from your graveyard and for the duration of that turn you can cast it spend any mana as if it were of any color to cast that spell and then you exile that card so basically you just play the reanimate or any reanimate kind of spell and you play it again with your treasure tokens and voila in one turn you have a lot of more pre presence and very nasty creatures next up you get so i'm still simulacrum i usually don't necessarily put him in my decks because i tend to build my mana base differently but this is a decent one for reanimate if you are running out of you know reanimate targets or if you just want to have a way to draw and, and put some lands uh, so that's that's always a, a good target and it's a classic so why not next up another creature that i would try not to reanimate even though his cost is really expensive or at least fairly hard because five is not really expensive for commander but three red is it's kiki jiki mirror breaker and this little creature i mean everybody loves the the reflection of kiki jiki which is the new saga it's for some reason people didn't really realize how strong it was at the beginning well, you weren't playing when Kikijiki was around <laughs> back when it was released in the Kamigawa set. This card was insane, and I mean, this is an insane card. You cast it, and then you just double creature until the end of turn. It is insane play it please play it uh it's it's a great great card it's not gonna be easy to cast but you have um, ways to get your creatures to do more stuff and remember you have some etb creatures and also some uh leave in the battlefield creatures so that's also very good because he enables those triggers as well next and theme with well you know sauron the card that i would play and I would try actually, this is gonna be the, the kind of slot where you want to play a card that allows you to get them more 
um, consistently, and this is the Nazgul. Now the Nazguls, they are really great cards. They work off of Ring Tempting you, but you can play 9 of them, or up to 9 of them in any deck, including in Commander. So the main idea is, when it is the battlefield, you get a, a trigger off of the Ring Temps, and then, and then each Wraith gets a plus one, plus one counter, including it, the one that just entered, off of the Ring Tempting. And the, the good thing about this, and honestly, how many you play depends on how you build the non-reanimate part of the creatures of your deck. But even then, like depending on how much board presence with them you have, this is an insanely good card because you're going to be doing a lot of hopefully ring tempting with the fact that you're going to be removing your 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 opposing commanders as soon as as much as you can so as much as you can you'll notice that in our sorceries and in our instance part but what you will do is you want to have a board presence that doesn't get you run over because the problem with these kind of decks is if you're just waiting for i don't know turn five six seven do stuff you a, might not be having a lot of fun but also b you might get just steamrolled by your opponents and you don't want to do that and nazgul allows you to protect yourself this is why you can go up to nine and i personally i would play nine if possible depending on how I, how you build the creatures lots because of that um so it creates this little army of defenders that just buffs each other up so much so any trigger activation of a ring temps buffs it and buffs the other one so they all buff each other and on top of that they have death touch so even if you just have one or two and you know you have your opponents have something that doesn't have flying or um, shroud or whatever or unblockable then you just put them in front of it and it's like okay yeah you want to attack me with your really expensive creature sure go ahead you're gonna die so that's that's why i would use this more as an insurance policy and then i mean if they're not dealt with they grow really really big like really really big and really really dangerous and on top of that again they enable the ring bearing ability and the ring tempting ability and that becomes really tricky because at second level you draw a card discard a card that's amazing to get through your deck, which is insanely good, especially in, in a reanimate deck. And then on top of that, the last one means that whenever you, your ring bearer deals damage, which by the way, you have a lot of huge creatures on this one, then I'd allow you to be like, well, if you don't block it, you're gonna get hurt um and if they do block it they die but if they don't block it they deal an extra four damage to each player so that's really good next up this is gonna be a staple in my black decks if possible mainly because of the amount of extra draws that people love to do in a lot of commander decks is the orcish bowmasters this is not a necessary slot do not go out and buy it do not go out and spend money unless you really think that the people that you're going to be playing against are going to be playing you know sylvan libraries they're going to be playing phyrexian arenas all the extra draw effect if you think that they're going to be playing that and you're going to be playing like depending on your lgs or the people you play against usually then this is something that you would really put in play again in a 99 card deck unless you tutor it you don't have you the a lot of chance to get it every single time but if you do get it it still allows you to do something and on top of that you can still reanimate it depending on how the game is going right so you might just keep it in there if, if there's nobody that's playing the dirty you know i'll draw i don't know each turn i'll draw three four or five especially with the with the one ring now cards per turn but if there are then you can just reanimate it if it's in your graveyard and then you keep them in check next up you have an extremely good card this is sauron the necromancer and why this card is good is because even though it doesn't reanimate creatures at their full power and toughness you still create a 3-3 three, three wraith token copy which again enables the, the wraith buff up from the nazgul's and all the effects of those cards are still there so if you have any etbs any attack and uh, you'll see that a lot of the creatures that we put into the graveyard um, have that then this card is going to be insanely good so funny enough i think this is actually the, the better sauron out of all the saurons even the one of the ones that we will be reanimating just because of how good it is of a reanimator that you can just you don't you know it's a five coster it's not as expensive as 
all blacks so you don't mind in the end you know it's two black pips i mean and yeah it's it's really really good and you want to be making it your ring bearer right so that's the only caveat you want to have this as your ring bearer so you should try and have a ring bearing ability or a trigger when you play it otherwise those tokens do dissipate that's the only thing that makes it a bit on the ife side but otherwise, this is a great, great card. Next up, we get the Witch King of Angmar, which is one of the Nazgul's. And this is another Wraith, as you can start seeing a theme. But it's also a very good card, you know, because it allows you to create, well, a board defense. Because if people attack you, uh, each opponent then needs to sacrifice a creature that they'll damage to you. And it's each opponent, not just each opponent that attacked you. So that's a really annoying. You get a Ring Tempt again really powerful and then on top of that you can just discard any card from your hand so you'll see that we have a couple of these cards creatures that allow you to kind of fix if you've gotten some huge costing creatures that you want to reanimate in hand you're going to discard it you're going to put it in a graveyard you're going to give this indestructible you tap it it's okay it doesn't matter if you do use it defensively and on top of that cherry on top not only does it trigger with all the other nazgulls but it also has flying why not next up we have the violent umber which allows us to be able to search for our library and put a creature card or any card in, in the graveyard but realistically we'll be putting creatures in the graveyard but this is just an enabler for our tactics and it has death touch so it's always good to have a little bit of a uh, defense and doesn't cost too much and next you get chainer which is usually one of the best reanimate commanders and yeah it allows you to cast cards from your graveyard so the token part of which is the, the, the treasure token part of our deck can still help with this but realistically if we don't want to do that where we just use the other part which allows us to give haste to all the ones that we've reanimated it's not a bad creature it's a, a non-expensive one so you can just cast it keep it there eventually it'll give haste to something if it's not been dealt with or otherwise if you if you discard one of those low costing ones or then you can just cast a creature spell from the graveyard and just put it into play so that's really nice that's a good addition next up Feldon of the third path and this is a really really good card for this deck this this i cannot stress enough you created a token of a copy of a target creature in the graveyard your graveyard not any graveyard and it just it just stays in your graveyard still so you, you can just target the same one each turn effectively transforming Felden into whatever creature you want it to become you know it creates the token it does the thing until the end of turn and then sacrifice it so that's really 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 good that's that's just as good as you can and also you can do this defensively because it's not just yours it's the next 10 step so for example people don't read the card and you keep it at untapped somebody attacks with a really precious creature you might just have him or something else on board and then just they attack you they don't pay attention Poop, you reanimate something that's gonna kill whatever they, they attack with even just a death toucher and that dies this dies at the end of turn but your felden is fine so you want to keep him protected you don't want to attack with felden but this is an important creature next up we have sheldred and this is the sheldred the normal sheldred and i would put this not in the reanimate slot but in the normal slot it's a menace creature as a four five money answers the battlefield the point of sacrifice each a uh, known token creature or planeswalker and then you transform it so you flip it around uh, four or five and you can only do this if an opponent has eight or more cards in a graveyard which you have some cards that enable to mill your opponents as you've seen already and uh, it shouldn't be too hard to go to eight in a long commander game so this is what we're counting for you're you're eventually slowly milling your your opponents and not really but you know some atbs and some triggers do enable you to put cards in an opponent's graveyard they're going to be playing their own spells as well so you can flip it around you know the first few steps allow you to really annoy your opponents because you're destroying stuff and then you're milling them and discarding cards and then the last step is a rise of the dark realms at which allows you to put all creatures from all graveyards under your control so that's the end game kind of reanimate aspect of this so this is a more of a win condition kind of creature and that's definitely something that you want to play absolutely 
Next up, you get the Disciple of Volus. This is a 2-1 simple human wizard that whenever he enters the battlefield, you sacrifice, you gain X life, you draw X cards, and, and that's X for the sacrifice creature's power. So if you have a big creature, for example, you don't have a lot of cards in hand for some reason, and you have a huge creature, you can sack it, then you can reanimate that creature back, and you've gained life and drawn cards, which is also good because it's kind of a way for us to protect ourselves to get this card because um, you might not have a lot of defense, so you might go down in, in life more so than other um, opponents, and some opponents are fairly scared of reanimate decks, and duly so, so it makes sense. Another good way to discard cards is the Magus of the Wheel, which is basically a uh, Wheel of Fortune and it's just on a creature, right? So you sacrifice it and then each player discards their hand and they draw you seven cards. And again, it's annoying that you're giving your opponents the advantage to draw seven cards, but for you it's gonna be the biggest advantage because you just put a uh, reanimate target hopefully into the, the graveyard so you wouldn't crack it or sacrifice it until you have some targets in hand to do that and then you reanimate them hopefully soon enough and that's gonna be good if you don't want to risk it don't play this kind of card of course if you if you're feeling a bit more reserved and you don't want to go for something like this that's fine another good card is croxa and the latest croxa i mean it's it's a great in in many of the constructed formats but in general you you just need basically six cards including croxa in the in the graveyard you exile five from the graveyard you play it and then you can also just get the first trigger as a as a turn two kind of thing and it's really annoying and uh, for your opponents as well and I think it's it's a great great creature and I wouldn't put it as a reanimate target because it reanimates itself so that's always good then you get one of the ways as a creature to deal with your opponent's boards especially if there are small weenies and stuff like that I love massacre girl massacre girl is really really good as a steamrolls small tiny decks and it can just like if you have if you're ever playing against a big token generation deck, this just shuts it down. So this is one of the effects that we control the boards with, and it's a creature, and again, you can reanimate it if you're struggling, so that's always good. Then we have Ilharg, the Raids Boar, and this one is um, something that I wouldn't reanimate, but it was something that I would play in hand with our treasure tokens and our other spells that allow us to do this because Ilharg allows us to put a creature from our hands into play and then, you know, put it, it has haste until the end of turn and then you put it back into hand. And there are times where you might not have a lot of put into the graveyard abilities and this one gets you out if you're stuck in hand with some huge creature that you can't just get down but you can play this. It allows you to, to really do deal with those huge creatures in hand and that's always great because also you keep re-enabling the ETB of those huge creatures. So now if you don't want to play it, I understand if you want to go more the enemy side that's fine you can just keep it as as without Ilharg in the end it's not a big problem. Next up we will look at the more annoying creatures. <laughs> I mean, they're all fairly annoying, but uh, these are the reanimate targets. And the reanimate targets are really, really big targets. So the first one is the Shard of the Void Dragon, which was introduced in, in the Necron deck with the 40k universes beyond. It's a 7-7 seven, seven flying. It has Spear of the Void Dragon. Whenever a Shard, it ends a battlefield. Each opponent sacrifices an online permanent. That's annoying in general, but, you know, again, if you re-enable these ETBs, like for example with Hark, Ill Hark, you do really well and then whenever an artifact is put into gra in the graveyard from the battlefield or is put into exile from the battlefield you put two counters on him now the reason why i keep this is because you will have artifacts aka treasure tokens that you will be sacrificing and putting into the graveyard even though they get exiled when they hit the graveyard and they still trigger as you know is put into the graveyard so stuff like this can help it's a 7-7 seven, seven flying creature it's huge it's annoying for your opponents and yeah overall it has to be dealt with now the great one that is a classic is the grave titan enters the battlefield or attacks you create two 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 zombies and it has that touch and it's a six six what more can you ask for this is a great great card and definitely a, a reanimate target another good reanimate target is the combustible gear hulk and this is because e either your opponents want you to draw three cards or you mill three cards which by the way you have a lot of huge costing cards and then you deal damage to the total amount of value to that player right so you, you let's say you have a couple of i don't know 
a seven coster a two coster and a three coster in that you're gonna be dealing 12 damage to that player just like that <laughs> so this is really good and on top of that it's a six six first striker that costs six so it's really really good and it's not impossible to cast this one off of your treasure tokens as well so it's always good and then you get the inches silver silver dragon this is where we start entering into the dragons <laughs> realm and i have three of them here and they're amazing so the the this one allows you to draw cards equal to a d result so a d20 and you get to keep them forever in your hand because you have no maximum hand size it's an 8 8 flyer it's pretty self-explanatory then you get the ancient brass one roll a d20 and this is a reanimate you know so this is really good and it's whenever it deals combat damage to a player just like the previous dragon so it's a flyer it's a seven six it will deal damage to a player eventually unless it's dealt with right away and then you'll be well basically reanimating any of your creatures Another great creature to reanimate is the Entry Copper Dragon, which allows you to create treasure tokens when it deals combat damage to a player as a D20. So that's another huge, huge, beautiful creature to reanimate. And guess what? It synergizes with your deck really, really well. And so, yep, another great one that they are going to be reprinting in Commander Masters is the Archfiend of Despair. This is a 6-6. Six, six that costs an insane amount your opponents can't get life so that's the cherry on top i guess if you're playing against a life linkering deck or a life gain deck that's really great but realistically you're not going to be using that too much and then at the beginning of each step, step each opponent loses life equal to the amount of life that they lost this turn so the player gets dealt five damage they lose 10 they lose another five life so in overall they lose 10 life so on and so forth and it does you don't have to be dealing damage to these opponents it can be other opponents dealing damage to them but it creates kind of like a, a reason for your opponents as well to start hitting your opponents and kill each other more so than attacking you because well they're incentivized you're going to be dealing twice the amount of damage then you get the Balefire Dragon, which is a 6-6, six, six. and when it deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature it controls, so this is amazing, you deal 6 damage to each creature at most cases you'll be cleaning most of their board and yeah it's just a great reanimate target and then you get Nazahal primal tide 77 that is um a draw engine you just basically deal you draw a card whenever an opponent casts a non creature spell so that's really great and you can always discard three cards and return it to the battlefield tap under your next 10 step so that's really really good you are just basically returning it to the battlefield really easily you're going to be discarding cards so that's hopefully a more reanimate targets and it's a huge creature so that's a really good card another great one is itali primal storm six six for six when it attacks you basically just cast the top card of the each opponent's deck without paying the mana cost <laughs> i mean this is something that has to be dealt with and even just one attack can be enough to put your all of your opponents in a really 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 bad situation next we get naheb the dread horde champion which allows you to um basically whenever you deal damage to a player you discard as many cards as you want for each card you discard it draw a card a new and you get to create one red mana that stays to you until the end of turn and then that's i mean that's it <laughs> and then uh, until the end of the turn you get to cast that mana for whatever you need it so that's really really good this is not necessarily um a reanimate target per se because in the end uh, it's a 5-4 for four, 4 so it's really easy to cast but in the end if it's in your graveyard you really want to be playing him ASAP so yeah it's one of those kind of creatures it's either or it doesn't matter this is a reanimate target for me because it's so strong next you get Shieldred the Whispering One the original Shieldred which allows you to return the target creature card from your graveyard at the beginning of your upkeep and then at the beginning of enemies upkeeps that player sacrifices a creature so that's really annoying has Swamp Walk as well cherry on top so <laughs> that's, that's really really good next another great card to reanimate is the Balrog again we're staying in theme 7-5 it costs one less to cast for each 
sacrifice permanent this turn. So um, it can be your opponent's permanence as well. Uh, so if for whatever reason they're playing in your turn, you can cast them cheaper if they're sacrificing stuff. Or if you're having them sacrifice stuff as an extra, you can get some cheaper cast of this one and on top of that you sacrifice treasures therefore allowing you to get twice the amount of mana up until the five generic is gone that's really really good and it can only be blocked by legendary creatures it has haste and then whenever it dies you destroy target artifact creature or opponent controls very flavorful very strong card i really like it and it tends to be really annoying um, very quickly. Another great one which is super annoying is Sauron the Dark Lord and the reason why it's very annoying is is that not only is it powerful but it has a really deep ward cost because they have to sacrifice a legendary artifact or creature so this would be I mean there are quite a few legendary creatures in commander decks so that's fairly fair not necessarily all commander decks play a lot of legendary creatures a lot of them just play the commander as legendary but um, if they don't have a lot then they are gonna have to sacrifice their commander or a legendary artifact then whenever your opponents cast a spell you must orc one that's always great you're just sitting there and it's like yeah no please please go on please keep casting a lot and then whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player you get to ring temp great again you can continue ring tempting after the fourth level has been reached so that's always wonderful you can always swap your ring temp trigger to another creature even a smaller one and whenever you're ring temps you, you may discard your hand and if you do you draw four cards so again this is kind of the thing that well you have one card in hand okay i'm just gonna discard my hand there you go and then if you do you draw four cards so that's really good and yeah it's overall a really strong creature honestly it's really really annoying next you get the lord of the forsaken six six for six lion trampler so that's insane you sacrifice another creature you mill target player so that's really annoying and then you pay one life to add one generic mana and can cast spells from your graveyard to pay uh, for, for this payment cost so this is really good you're just looking at, at getting some extra creatures maybe from your graveyard to just be cast because at that point maybe you've already had a lot of tokens generated for treasures and other spells that can enable that so that's really good massacre worm another great creature this is a staple it minus two minus two is the whole board of your opponents whenever it enters the battlefield and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies if the player loses two life that's really annoying it's just a six five for x and warm in the end there might be strong targets as i said i'm giving you a list you choose which one another one that's that could be a bit more cheaper and easier to get is the noxious gear hog whenever it enters the battlefield you destroy another creature and you gain life for any destroyed creature that way so that's really good you can just destroy something really big on their opponent's board and then you get life equal to the toughness of that creature and yeah even if it's a smaller creature sometimes smaller creatures tend to have um, like for example if you look at the halflings they tend to have small power but bigger toughness then a, a really annoying one in the colors of grixes is lord xander the collector which just basically halves your opponent's deck really 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 quickly and if you get this and play with also shieldred then well <laughs> ggs because that's insane and then if it dies well for example you can stack it yourself because you're gonna reanimate it again really annoying then yeah you just annoy your uh, target player even that much more so this is a great creature to have another good one is the torrential gear hulk which allows you to cast target instant from the graveyard the pain is mana cost and we have some really Really good instance in our deck and even though it's not the kind of card that necessarily is usually seen in this kind of deck i think that it's a very good addition because you there are some instances that we will want to recast again and this just enables you know some extra ramping some extra tutoring some extra reanimating some extra things to happen on the turn that it enters the battlefield alternatively you can cast some really good instance that you will see that will just give you an advantage over your opponents over their board so that's really good and i like the the torrential gear hulk and then last is the sepulchral primordial which is a huge creature because 
When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Now granted, this is not the kind of creature that enables you to reanimate your own creatures, but it does enable you to reanimate your opponent's creatures. And if you've milled them a lot, if you've played the deck correctly, you've removed a lot of their board, you killed a lot of their board, then this allows you to get back those creatures. And yeah, you just do that that way. And also it has Intimidate, so that's really, really annoying. And it is a 5-4, it's not one of those big ones, but it is annoying. So that is it for the creature slot. Realistically, the creatures, as you've seen, are huge or enablers. Now let's have a look. And I, I would say one thing, last thing that, that before moving on, that's very important is keep the creatures that you reanimate in the creature slot small, but big enough to be able to hit those reanimate targets as much as you can you need to strike a balance this deck doesn't play off of creatures a lot it plays off of reanimating those creatures but at the same time you do want those creatures in hand and discarded or you know in another way is milled etc to be able to play them so you need to be able to hit those creatures so it's going to be up to you and how you build the deck on on a, on a balance of number of creatures to spell it is not a tribal deck where the number of creatures is going to be insanely high like 30 something creatures or 40 for whatever reason but it is still needing a good chunk of creatures to be able to do what it's supposed to do. now this is one of the few decks that i would say if you can as we've explained go the cdh route because of the mana base as well so if you can uh, go with the moxin so the chrome mox the mox diamond the jewel lotus the lotus petal the mana crypts the soaring go with the cdh mana base if possible because of sauron and because how expensive this deck is going to be to cast but i understand that not everyone can do that it is not something that is necessarily possible to do so uh, keeping that in mind i have set up here a few artifacts to kind of help you do what you're supposed to be doing as a reanimate deck the first stop is the crucible of worlds so it, you can play lands from your graveyard and this will allow you to go through your deck well fetch lands you can play them again and or alternatively if you discarded lands you can play them back into your battlefield and that's really really important because you will be milling yourself a lot sometimes and that can hinder your ramping to bigger things another good thing is the phyrexian because this allows you to sack certain creatures that want to be sacked to be able to create mana generation and again the more mana you generate the bigger the creatures you can cast and another cool one that maybe not necessarily you will want but it could be a cool idea is to play the vidalcan ori and this is because if you can cast spells from a graveyard or you know any reanimate spells on their opponent's turn then that just enables a whole different game because you're casting those creatures on their turn not on yours you're not you're reanimating those creatures on their turn and that just breaks the game significantly it hinders your opponents a lot another a uh, few things that I would say is use the talismans and the signets. So, for example, a talisman of indulgence and a demir signet, and also the talisman of creativity, the talisman of dominance. All of those ones you want to be using because you need to be ramping. And as I said, this is kind of like the level under going the CDH route. So definitely you're going to be wanting to use as much of this as can as you can because of the type of deck that you're playing. Another great card is the one ring. This is simply just too broken not to play it. I mean, you're drawing extra cards. You are getting to your reanimate targets to discard them quicker or to reanimate spells to, to reanimate your targets quicker. It's just insane. But I would be mindful of the amount of life that you lose when you play this card so be very mindful of this because you're not a life gain deck and because you're a reanimate deck you're going to be playing a lot slower than other decks and they are going to try and pile up on you asap so this is a risky card this is not a automatic inclusion in this deck you should see how it plays with your own the way that you build your own deck for example i would build it with a defensive line of wraiths and that would then enable me to keep the one ring up to get my creatures into the play a bit better but at the same time you don't want to do it too much because yeah you're just going to be pinging yourself way too much on a board that's already playing against you 
A better target instead is the Palantir of Orthanc, because the Palantir allows your opponents to basically say, okay, you're, you're going to be drawing cards because you don't want, <laughs> they don't want you to mill cards. Maybe the first two interactions, maybe, and even then, then will happen where you're going to be milling some cards but you mill x cards where x is the number of the influence counter so initially you do one then two and so on and so forth and then what ends up happening is they get damaged okay that player loses life equal to the mana value of those cards and you have some huge hitters in there so they're not going to be wanting to do that too often and yes you they have 40 life commander but at the same time they're not just playing against you they're playing against the opponents and that's really really tricky so the plant here i think is a better choice over the the ring here okay another good one that i would play is the skull clamp because you do get some cards that you want to die send them up you draw two cards it's a very good draw engine you definitely want this again you can use this instead of the one ring for example and um because your creatures are going to be targets like absolutely going to be targets for sacrificing and then you know you have some more signets like the is signet and the ragdo signet which are very good cards that i would play uh, then you also get the whip of Erebus, which is another great way to reanimate so this is a forecaster and then for four and tap it you turn like a creature card from the girl to the battlefield it gains haste as well in the beginning of the next end step so basically this en enables you to reanimate your creature for one turn and one turn only you you exile it but what ends up happening is you just reanimate for four you do this as a sorcery you do it on your turn but you could just be annoying your an opponents really a lot but just having this so and you tend to be a two for one kind of situation with your deck of course you would want a uh, fel felden more so than the whip but this is still a good alternative to have constant reanimation on your board I would be careful though on using it too much because if you're exiling all the cards from your graveyard before you can permanently reanimate them, then you'll find yourself at a really disadvantage. And yeah, so just be very careful, use it wisely. Another great card that I love in this kind of deck, Bolus' Citadel. You get to play the cards by paying life on front top of your library. That's amazing. And um, that's again, double-edged sword, especially in this kind of deck, as I was explained before, but it's really really strong and it's definitely something that i would play here because you have huge creatures that you just want to put in play and then once they start entering play you don't really care that you're losing life because your opponents are going to have to deal with them asap moving on from artifacts uh, we have one battle that I think would be beneficial, and this is the invasion of Vimonketh. And this is basically a simple, you know, mill and discard cards for your opponents, and then when you flip it around, which you will have hopefully a reanimated creatures that can easily go above their heads, then it just becomes a copy of a target creature in the graveyard. Any graveyard, so that's really, really good. Really love it, and it's great for this kind of deck. Next up, let's go through some enchantments. The first one is Sneak Attack. I mean, this is fairly simple, right? So this is a Ilharg effect that you have to sacrifice at the end. It's not as expensive as Ilharg, and then you sacrifice, and then maybe you have a reanimate, you can just bring it back. So that's really, really good. This is an insane card. So <laughs> sneak attack has been here for a while, and it's good for some reasons, and that's that's why. Uh, the eldest reborn is a, is an okay saga. You know, each opponent sacrifices a planeswalker or a creature, so it's kind of like the Sheldred step one. Each opponent scars a card, kind of step two of Sheldred, and then put target creature card from uh, or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under control. So this allows you to reanimate. Really good. Another interesting one that i like to use is shiny impetus because in a sun enchantment aura and it goes the creature so they can't attack you with that creature for whatever reason if uh, the creature is huge or just scary and you want to dealt with but at the same time whenever it attacks you create a treasure token simple and it's not necessarily a card that you must have but again treasure tokens are going to be your friends here and i think this is going to be something nice because you remove basically a really strong creature from threatening you in any way shape or form and unless they deal with this enchantment for example you do it with your their commander uh, um, if it gets to a situation 1v1 at the end, then yeah, they won't be able to attack the, you with this card and you'll be getting a lot of treasures in response. 
Then next up you have animate dead, simple reanimate enchantment. You bring it back so long as the, the enchantment is attached and in play. It stays there, it gets minus one, minus one, minus zero, but you don't really care. It's really great. Same thing for dance of the dead and it gets a plus one plus one counter so and the only problem with dance of the dead is that you have to untap it so to untap you have to pay some cost but it's a good reanimate way another card is the phyrexian reclamation which i like to use because there are sometimes you put cards in the graveyard that you don't want to be in your graveyard so um some creatures you might just want them in hand for some reason and you don't want them as reanimate targets and this allows you to put them back into your hand and another great card is the call of the ring i cannot stress this enough if this is a card that a allows you to draw that's really really good because of the ring bearing ability and then you just get an insane amount of ring temps triggers which synergizes with other parts of our deck as played. Then we get the one ring to rule them all saga and this allows you to temp and mill so that's great then destroy all non-legendary creatures and then each opponent loses a life for each creature card in that player's graveyard. Now granted you might not think this is very strong but with the fact that as i said our toolbox of instant sorcery is going to be really focused around around killing your opponent's board this is going to be really good next you can use fiery inscription i know it sounds a little bit weird but as i said you have a lot of instant sorceries interactions that's really good and on top of that you just ring temps whenever it enters the battlefield so that's always positive and then you get fable of the mirror breaker and i mean you get a free kiki jiki at the end and also you get to discard some cards and put them into your graveyard and you also get to create more treasure tokens with the goblin shaman token so that's really really good and i would also play the phyrexian arena careful again mindful of how much life you're losing and how what other cards you're having but for extra arena allows you to extra draw so that's always good then i would use the cemetery tampering because it allows you to hide away a card and then uh, at the beginning of of your upkeep you check if there are 20 or more cards and you play that card without paying its mana cost again it's going to be one of those huge creatures that we want necromancy this is a very classic you know it allows you to target a creature from any graveyard bring it back into play and it stays in play for as long as and necromancy is part of the game so that's really really good next up let's have a look at the instance i will try and say that these instants are again cdh heavy and and very ramp heavy and very salty so keep that in mind again if you don't want to play cdh too much in this deck remove what you want but otherwise let's have a look mana drain is a great great little card because it allows you to ramp whatever you've mana drained away as a counter into your next end so use it intelligently of course it's best to counter the spell that is going to have the biggest impact or the biggest impact for your next turn so this is the trick with mana drain so if somebody's going to be playing something insane you might want to be holding off especially if you know their decks and how they play just just hold off and and just be a bit more patient don't lose it right away unless you think you're going to be able to play something off the next turn Next up, Cyclonic Rift. Basic, this is a, a, a staple and commander for a reason, and this allows you to be able to control the game as it progresses if you don't have enough threats on the board yet. Then we get the Dark Ritual. This is a classic. You just ramp up. It's really wonderful. And yeah, you're going to be seeing uh, quite a few of these for the different colors. And then we get one of the first generators, which is the Unexpected Windfall. You know, you discard a card, which is something that you want to do. You discard really big. You draw two cards and create two treasure tokens. Wonderful. Wonderful little thing. And it's really, really good. Hellstyle Negotiation is another way that you could play and getting um, piles of cards into your graveyard and some into your hand. I am not, it's, it's a fact of fiction basically, right? But it's more of an iffy fact of, fact of fiction. Um, I prefer to um, not play it, but this is an alternative. So there there you go. Swan Song, classic counter spell, really good. Control the board as much as you can. Deadly Rolic, another great, great interaction that it will be reprinted, if I'm not mistaken, Commander Masters. So keep an eye out for that. But if you have your commander in play, it costs nothing. And yeah, you just exile target creature. 
Now do keep in mind that exiling does not trigger the second part of Sauron because it must die, but you know, it's still a good way to control the board. Seething Song, another good instant. It ramps up, it adds 5 mana, so that's really, really good. That's always good to have, especially because of the cards that we will play. Then you get some of the more simpler removals. And again, I will really stress that whatever removals you have, use them here. I'm just giving you examples. There are simple ones like this one, like Murder, you destroy target creature. Again, because of the second part, but also because you want to control the board. Same thing for Hero's Downfall. It's yet another removal, but definitely Level. Again, there are some removals, some spot removals in the deck proper that are really, really good. So keep that in mind. Keep those if you if you want, and also add extra ones. So that's always wonderful. Sauron's Ransom, another way to get some ring tempting and also factor fiction yourself with piles. So that's really, really good. Magna Opus is a great card. This is one of those cards that you see currently in is a creativity deck and it's an instant so you can target it with the gear hulk and then you can just create a treasure token and dump it into the, the graveyard so that's really wonderful. Another great removal is terror of course. This is a very very classic card. Another simple one if you don't have a lot of removals you can go for the file for example and this still kills a creature. Then faithless salvage discard card draw card you get to do it again very useful if you don't have a lot of discard draws counter spell very self-explanatory very good card to control the board infernal grasp another way to remove uh, a target creature again spot removal is going to be really important for you chaos warp is kind of a, a an okay one you can use it for yourself if you know what the next card is going to be on top or you can use it on um an opponent i am more uh, for trying to use it on myself and i don't know if i would play this card but again it's another way to control the board you have negate which is another great counter then you get frantic search another way to intelligently put cards into your graveyard and also draw cards and then you untap the lens so that's really good big score another great card to discard a card create tokens and draw cards really wonderful tinted indulgence is another great one draw two cards discard a card unless you have five or more cards into the graveyard so great way to loot away and just otherwise just draw certain lesson draw two cards discard a card create a power stone another way to ramp into things again i wouldn't play all of them necessarily you check which ones you want to play of these kind of effects but it's still really important that you do get the ramp and these are all like two for ones three for ones for yourself because you're not just drawing and creating you know tokens that ramp but those cards that you've discarded are going to be cards that you're going to reanimate so this three for ones are really really good then you get the rescue from the underworld which unfortunately gets exiled whenever you use it and you can't really target it with effects to play from from the graveyard but it allows you to um, sacrifice a, a creature then choose a target creature and then they come, both come back so that's really really good and it's an instant cabal ritual another one that's really good for you because you're going to be having threshold really quickly so you're going to be wanting to be casting it for the threshold that gives you five mana instead of the usual dark ritual mana and tomb great great little card allows you to search a deck put a card creature card into the graveyard it enables what we want to do really well songs of the damned add one black for each creature card in your graveyard this is amazing you're going to be having a lot of creatures hopefully so even if it's five creatures in your graveyard you'll have five mana just off of one black mana that's really wonderful. Then you get the Price of Fame, which is another one way to destroy target creature, especially if you targets um, legendary creatures, so commanders. It costs less and you surveil, so you get to put cards into the graveyard. So again, this is all whatever you won't feel like using out of this tool set, use it. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Anyway, that's great. And that's that for for instance. Now let's move on to sorceries. Sorceries are another great way for us to do the same things that we wanted to do with instance, just better. And and so we start off with the Wheel of Fortune. 
And again, this is just something that I've explained with the Magus of the Wheel. You either play it if you have it or if you want to give the, your player, your opponent's advantages. If you don't, don't worry about it. But it's supposedly for more for yourself than for every for anyone else. Then you get Damnation. Great board wipe for black. Absolutely wonderful. And, and just deals with a lot of really annoying creatures. And it stabilizes the board for you. You get an Earth, which allows you to return a creature card from the graveyard onto the battlefield for three mana or less uh costing cost and you can cycle it as well so it's not bad I, I believe it's great because you still have some small cost creatures that are kind of really important to your strategy and that are not necessarily targets for the bigger reanimate spells they get cathartic reunion which uh, you draw you discard two cards you ramage and you draw three cards very good. Zombify is a great sorcery. That's just a reanimate, basically. Just it costs four. Pitch together is a great target for threshold. You don't necessarily you want to cast it for the non-threshold part but once you hit the threshold part it becomes really really useful and call to the netherworld another way to you know you can discard it for zero you can um pay it for for the mana cost so it's zero <laughs> so you have a lot of discard cards you pay zero you get one creature card to your hand and uh, that is black again not necessarily super useful for us but there are some cards that are smaller that we don't want to reanimate and that's good then you have incarnation technique and this allows you to well basically you reanimate or you can copy it and then your opponent can choose to do the same thing and to reanimate it and yeah it's really really good you would choose an opponent to you know copy it that it doesn't have a great maybe amount of creature cards in their graveyard if they do there's not something amazing either way you get two triggers out of that so that's really really good and then of course classic in black toxic deluge it allows you to control the board by imparting another way to search your library then put in one in your hand and then into your graveyard again not necessarily one of the better ones but if you don't have the more expensive ones that's great mutilate another way to control the board that deals with your swamp so that's really really good Good. Torment of Hellfire, this is something that kind of is more of a tactic in and of itself with two of the lines that we will be playing, but in and of itself is a great way to, to tax your opponents a lot and it's just annoying, so that's really really good. Not necessary for this deck, but it's a good card. Now we get to Indomitable Creativity, which is a great I think reanimate for you because you'll be creating so many treasure tokens hopefully that you will be going through your deck and hopefully finding some of the bigger cards that you have maybe you won't hopefully you won't find the artifact it's a bit iffy if you do find the artifacts there's not much but there's also a good chance that you'll find some really big creatures so that's really really good and you can just do that um not necessary for this kind of deck but it's something that could pay off it's kind of a gamble and i like it because yeah for basically five because you're going to be sacking those two treasure tokens you're going to be able to hopefully get something really wonderful from your deck then you get another type of reanimate that allows your player your opponents to also reanimate which is exhume a bit annoying but at the same time it's great because you're gonna have, have the best targets to reanimate more so than your opponents hopefully and then you get the mother of all reanimates which is the rise of the dark realms as we said before when we were looking at the back of Sheldred, you get to put all, all creatures from all graveyards under your battlefield so under your control that's really really great it costs a lot but again you're ramping really easily so that's not bad and you're also wiping the boards a lot and they're not necessarily exiled so that's really good windfall another great way to discard your hand and then you draw cards so yes it does give each player the ability to do that but again you're be getting the most out of this hopefully claim the precious is another way to ring tempt and destroy a target creature so that's annoying then you have persist which allows you to turn target non-legendary creature from a graveyard your graveyard to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter you don't really care about the minus one minus one because of the creatures that you will be having i'm um, our grave such a library from a non legendary creature putting it put it into the graveyard another way to search put it into graveyard so that's always wonderful Vict victimize this is a gray reanimate card honestly you just sack a creature choose two creatures you put them back into your 
play tab are you kidding me this is wonderful bridge to me multiverse is another annoying one because you get to put um the creatures that you mill everybody mill stand you really enjoy that and then on top of that you just reanimate <laughs> for each player either a creature or planeswalker and usually do the strongest one so this is another win con so next up you get writ of return that allows you to reanimate then you attach it to whatever big creature you have with flying and then whenever the, the creature that this card is attached to deals damage to a player you get to play it again basically without paying this mana cost that's insane and you get dread return which is another way to return cards from graveyard onto play and then you also flashback it so that's really really nice and sacrificing three creatures is not necessarily a bad thing for you. Buried Alive is another way to get three cards, creatures of course, from the from your deck and put them into the graveyard. Then again, as usual, I tell you, don't play the tutors if you don't want to, but the Demonic Tutor will be a good, good one because you go and fetch whatever card that is going to be useful for your next turn. And if you're already playing CDH cards and this is not a necessity, Unlike the other ones that I feel they are more of a necessity, but that's up to you. Command the Dread Horde is another great reanimate card because it allows you to reanimate and then put cards onto the battlefield. You do lose life equals to the converted mana cost of total of any number of creatures that you reanimate. But in Commander, that's not such a big deal. Uh, depending on how much life you still have at the turn that you do it. Uh, Agadim's Awakening is kind of a more of expensive reanimate because yeah you're not gonna be casting it outright but maybe it's a good way to get the smaller creatures back. Alternatively don't play it but it's also good to mana fix yourself so it's always nice in case you're just being screwed over. Tormenting Voice that's another one that's really nice. You discard a card and then you draw two cards and that's it for our sorceries. That's that's a good good tool set. As you've seen, our instances sorceries do very much the same thing: reanimate, deal with your enemies, creatures, draw, create treasure tokens, and mill. <laughs> it's more of the same, really, nothing much. Next up, we have one I think a uh, really good planeswalker, and that's Liliana Death's Majesty. So if you can protect her, you get to return creature cards from graveyard to the battlefield and they become zombies and then you can destroy normal zombies and you can just create protection zombie tokens and you mill two cards but that's just more of the same that you really want to be doing as your deck would like and then we have some lands here the lands that i usually discuss in this kind of decks they're not lands um that cover the mana base we don't go into that detail in this kind of series we just explain to you the kind of lands that synergize with the deck and they're more utility oriented so um when we are looking at this slot we're going to be seeing stuff that wants to either reanimate or help the, the process along so tomb fortress is an, a reanimate card which is insane that's really really nice it's part of the um, necron deck so <laughs> that's really nice then the crypt of agadim allows you to put uh, well basically it's kind of like a cabal coffers but dependent on how many uh, creatures you have black creatures in your graveyard so it's only black creatures but it, you will hopefully be putting quite a few and that can ramp up really easily if you don't have a lot of black creatures for whatever reason the way you built it i wouldn't play that one castle lock lane is another great one because it allows you to draw cards and that's always wonderful and if you don't want to lose more life just be careful don't play this if you're if you're playing a really really risky deck be careful with these kind of lands then you get the gyre reach sanitarium and again more of the same draw cards discard cards yes it's for each player unfortunately but still you'll be hopefully getting the most out of this deal and i have a couple of lands here you'll see this is one of them this is the Hall of Storm Giants, and this is the kind of card that I will put here because it gives you extra protection. You can say they've dealt with all the big ones, all the big creatures on your end. You can still have this and another couple. There are plenty of these kind of um, lands that become creatures, but this is kind of those you have to deal with it kind of situations and if you don't you always have a backup plan so yeah it's one of those lands that i just like to have as a controlly kind of deck because even though it doesn't enable reanimate it still is a backup plan to well you've dealt with everything i had but 
you know what i have mana just lying here i'm just gonna hit you with a seven seven and it's really annoying then you have the phyrexian tower sacrifice a creature to add to black always nice to ramp into minds of moira is really important in this deck because you create treasure tokens you exile the cards from graveyard unfortunately but hopefully you'll be exiling you know the instance that created more treasure token for you or the sorceries that added mana for you and so on and so forth and then you just create more treasure tokens so that's really good cabal coffers another great card really good synergy with urborg tomb of yamoth which you see that usually are paired together it puts every, every land even your opponent's lands as swamps and then you can just tap to add uh for each swamp you you control a black mana so that's really good and again you want to be ramping another possible card that you can use you could use the hive of the tyrant but you could also use a mute vault as a kind of there to just protect you or let you do something at the beginning alongside of it being a land so that's always good then you get takenuma and this is a great one because a lot is turn those creature cards that well didn't want in the graveyard and you still mill so that's always good then you get askanta which is another way to look at the top cards of your library and you can put them in the graveyard when it flips it's not necessarily um too bad because in the end you are getting some non-creature and non um land cards to put in hand but the problem is that once it flips it it puts those cards instead of the graveyard at the bottom of the library so that could be annoying and that's it for the deck this has been a very long winded one i wanted to give you as much as possible as many tools as possible for this kind of series so this is, tends to be a longer analysis of the decks but yeah i believe that this deck can really shine with these tool set unfortunately i still do believe that sauron is not as strong as a commander because he is so hard to cast and because he has to be cast instead of being reanimated so had they made him i don't know too generic less it would have been a, a much different ball game i believe and of course you don't have to generic less in a 9-9 but yeah in the end hopefully the whole synergy of the deck will shine through let us know in the comments below if you've figured out some other way to play sauron a better and if you think that we lost something out that we didn't say something uh, or we forgot about something else do make sure to let us know i think this deck can be fun and it, if you add the saltiness of the cdh inside you can still enjoy it more it's just your opponents are not going to enjoy it as much and you're going to become the biggest target on the board but such are things either way uh, that's it from us and we will try and strive to make the other decks as well on this series so stay tuned to our channel make sure to like and subscribe to the channel it really does help small channel like ours a lot you have no idea so please do that until the next time we hope you have a good day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next one bye